Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. I'm around Dan the world. Mar I'm Dan Marotti. I'm Tony, Mr. USA Atlas. Before we get to some interesting news at hand, check out some great happenings from some of our dear friends. Are you part of a nonprofit organization, a youth group looking to raise cash for your cause? Stay tuned at the end of this video to learn how you can bring the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation to your town live, featuring the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Have you ever thought about just how much time it takes to plan every detail of your wedding day? Many brides are now spending 10 to 15 hours each week planning the perfect day. It's like adding a part-time job to your already busy life. Not everyone can afford to hire a full-time wedding planner to help with every detail, which is why so many brides are now turning to a wedding day coordinator. That's right, a wedding day coordinator saves you money, and more importantly, it gives you the peace of mind that your special day will run smoothly. From finalizing all of the details you've worked so hard on to coordinating with vendors, KL Wedding Coordinators will be there every step of the way to guide you through the day and allow you to savor the memories that'll last a lifetime. For more information, visit facebook.com backslash KL Wedding Coordinators or give them a call, 603-320-2752. Boston on Sunday, October 21st. It's the WWE Live Super Show with your favorite superstars from both Raw and SmackDown Live under one roof. See Roman Reigns collide with Braun Strowman in a thrilling main event. And AJ Styles takes on Daniel Bryan, Samoa Joe, and The Miz in a fatal four-way match for the WWE Championship. Plus, Ronda Rousey will be live in action as she battles Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. Don't miss the WWE Live Super Show Sunday, October 21st. Tickets and VIP packages are available Friday, August 24th. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, welcome to a special installment of Wrestling Insiders. It's Labor Day weekend. We hope you're having a joyous end of the summer. Can you believe it's already over, Dr. Mm, Reese? Nope. A lot of people are going to go into depression and need to see you. <laughs> Keep me busy. All right. Well, this is, if you did not know, that's El Presidente himself, Dr. David Reese, joined by the Hall of Famer himself, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Tony, we had the discussion earlier on that was so intense, everybody got up and left. It was amazing. I don't blame them. I've boring. never seen anything like it. It was what? Born. Well, it was your life. Well, that's what's born about. All right. Well, before we get into some of the, the big stuff coming this fall, uh, we wanted to tape a short little segment about a, a couple of gentlemen that we lost. We like to pay tribute when we lose uh, some of the greats in this business, because oftentimes it's just a graphic or a a two-minute music video, and, that's on, and it's on to the next thing, the next person, and so on. But uh, before we get to Tony's friend, I wanted to talk about mine for a minute. Over the weekend, we lost a gentleman named Ed Cohen, who was one of the first two people that Vince and Linda McMahon hired when they took over the company from Vince McMahon Sr. He was in charge of the live events uh, at its peak. He was a gentleman that was trying to schedule three live events per night, all over the country. Sometimes on the weekends, they were double shots for those three live events on the Saturdays and Sundays. And when I was a 20-year-old version of me back in November of 2002, he was the first person I ever engaged with in the WWF at the time offices. And he gave me a chance to learn uh, so many different facets of the business, uh, treated me with respect. Uh, again, this is a 20-year-old kid, in some essence, being welcomed into this world of WWF, being valued for insight and work. Uh, you could not put a price on that. And I tell you, Ed battled, I think, cancer four times. Um, he wound up leaving WWF in 2005. And I'll be honest, I probably hadn't engaged with the man for 15 years. Uh, I would have actually had the thought about a year or so ago about trying to find him and get him to come down here because you talk about stories. This was a man that was immersed in the beginning of every WrestleMania. Uh, every, he, he was one of Vince McMahon's right-hand men. And uh, again, I, I'm glad I have all the emails saved because it'll make for some good stories for a book. I, I felt like I was hit with a baseball bat, Dr. Reese. Yep. Even though yeah. it was someone, again, probably 15 years or so I hadn't talked sure. with. Is that normal? Yes. It is? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, even if you haven't been in contact with the person, they were still a part of your life. 
and it brings back a part of your life, and it's still a sense of loss. Really was. And, uh, you know, people say, well, it didn't mean that much. You weren't there right now. No, that's still a part of who you are and who you were, and uh, it's important. It wasn't even the night I read it. It was the next day. Yeah. I just, I felt lousy all day, had a big pit in my stomach, and it just, I was really down about it, you know? Because I don't know if he understood how, how mm -hmm. much he meant to my existence in the world of professional wrestling. In some ways, the traits that I learned from my time in WWE, it carries on with what we do in the MWF, carries on with what we do here in the studio. So I, you know, I, WWE was great. I was really impressed that they sent out a tweet mm -hmm. mentioning a company executive that hadn't been with them in 13 years. Mm -hmm. it, it just, that showed to me how much he meant to that company when they started the national expansion in the 80s. And on top of that, Tony, you know, you and I, we share our text messages. I had to send you another bad one, as I know you're not on the Internet a heck of a lot. But we also lost your old buddy, Jim the Anvil Nighthawk. Yep, Jim was a great guy, very powerful man, you know, ex-football player. Bench pressed nearly 600 pounds. Uh, he, uh, the first thing that I thought about when I heard about the, the loss of Jim is his, uh, his daughter, uh, Nick, Nick Talia. Uh, She's a split image of her father, and, and they had a, a closeness that any person be jealous of. You know, her father and her were very, very, very close, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, all, all my best go out to uh, Nick Talia because I knew how close she was uh, to her dad. And Jim was a very, very close friend of mine. Me and him, we worked together uh, in, in, uh, when he was uh, part of the Hart Foundation with Bret Hart when they first came in, when they was heels. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made a lot of money with them. Me and SD worked with them. Uh, me, you know, me and Rocky worked with them. I worked with, with Tony Guerrero, who was my partner. And so me and Jim Nighthawk, we, we, we trained together, we traveled together, and, 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 and we never had a bad word between us in, in, really? in, in, all, in all these years. So, so he was kind of like a laid back guy, you know, loved to have fun. Very, very family orientated uh, 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 person, you know. He, he won a few wrestlers that, uh, you know, that stayed with his family and raised his family, along with people like Tito Santana. So there, there's a lot of wrestlers that have been married, but they've been married several times. Uh, but uh, Jim Nighthawk is, is really going to be missed, not just by me, but by, by, by a lot of uh, a, a lot of people, uh, a, a lot a lot of people. And like I said, uh, all my best go out to Natalia because <clears throat> they had a very very close relationship with her and her dad you know and she always worried about him and she felt that she was she act more like he was her son instead of her father i think he needed that well regardless but the, the, the type of person nick talia was she was there for her father talk about a credit to the business natalia and i oh know. she's an incredible in, in, incredible incredible individual that is what a female professional wrestler should be from a to z yeah, in my yep, opinion. Yep, she got a lot of decency to her. She's a very, very hard worker. I first met Nick Talia when she was a, a baby, and I didn't see her no more until I went to uh, Florida, where Steve Kern was training her in the ring, along with Seamus, uh, down in Florida, where they were just starting off their development studio. It, it wasn't completed there, but she was very, very polite, came up and talked to me and everything. And, and then I, I got to travel with her, uh, you know, 2008, 2009, I've been on a couple of European tours with her. She always worked hard, always was on time, did everything, you know. Just, a, like you said, a very, very professional. And I would like to see Nick Talia get uh, an executive position. Uh, due to the fact she's that perfect really, for it. Was, was she perfect to, to be the next moolah? Not only a great wrestler, but a great ambassador for WWE. A exactly. She's someone she you can herself, send out she anywhere and very, carry it very well. well. Right. She carries herself but very, very well. Uh, but but later on in her life, when she could no longer wrestle, she make a good executive, you know, to help Stephanie. Maybe an agent for the women. Even, for the on women, the road. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. You know, they, they don't have no women agent. That, you know, she could be one of. She, I think she'd be great new, at that. Right, right. To be to be a female agent because. You know, all your agents are men. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, Jim Knight had his story with the Millennium Wrestling Federation. A lot of people Googled it after he passed away. I really don't want to get into that. Well, this is somewhat of a tribute to it. People can find that on their own. Is someone 
uh, taking my personal feelings towards him aside, he was, contributed a lot to one of the great booms of professional wrestling. There's a whole generation of fans that are going to remember those great wars with the Hart Foundation, yep. and the British Bulldogs, Demolition, the Killer Bees, the Rougeos. They had two great runs. Dynamite Kid. Yeah, British Bulldogs, Davy Boy, and Dynamite. Neidhart was on the first live event I ever saw at the Garden back in August of 86 yep. that you were also on in yep. a classic. A yeah. classic match with Ted Arcidi that Gorilla Monsoon and Lord Alfred Hayes buried you <laughs> on during the commentary. It was so slow. Ted didn't like to do a heck of a lot. No. <laughs> well, it wasn't much that Ted could do. He was a big power lifter. Right. And he was not that uh, uh, mobile, right. as you want to say. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, that was a great way to put it. Wasn't it too mobile out there, you know? Well, uh, it was a heck of a night, but I just, Jim Knight had left a lot of positive wrestling memories in there. Yes, he did. You know, and, it's and unfortunate a, sometimes you meet the people that you enjoy watching on TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. But different story for a different time. The wrestling world mourns Jim Neidhart's loss, and we certainly send out our best wishes to the Neidhart family again, Natalia. Yes. I really respected her going out there wearing Jim's jacket uh, when she came back on pay-per-view a couple of weeks ago. And Any fun memories of Jim? Well, Unfortunately, no, because back in the old days, you have what's called good guys and bad guys, heels and babies, and Jim was always a heel. So, so we met occasionally in the gym, in the hotels, and, yeah. and stuff of that nature. But most of the time, uh, he was always up in his room calling his wife. He was always on the phone with his wife, and checking on his daughter. And, and like I said, he was a very, very, kind of remind me a lot of Tito Santana, very, very family oriented. You know the Hart Foundation, they that's a very, very close knit family. Oh absolutely. You yep. know, the yep. cousins and the brothers, you know, they very, very close knit uh, uh, family. So uh, uh, she she's a great asset uh, uh, to the business, Nick Talia. And, and and Jim was too. Jim was the you know, he was the the muscles, the strength, the power. Uh, I don't think Bret Hart would have got as far as he went without Big Jim. Because even though Tim, uh, uh, Brett was a very rugged kid, uh, right of his own, but Jim was kind of like the bodyguard for everybody. You know, you know, if you met with Brett, you had to go through Big Jim, and that was not an easy test. All right, Tony, we're going to take a brief time out. A couple of other gentlemen that you know had passed. We like to pay tribute. We're going to take a brief time out. We'll be right back. They're ready. Ready to take their rightful place amongst the literary greats. Who, 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 who? Who, you ask? The New Day! That's who. It's the Book of Booty. Shake it, love it, never be it. It's the feel-good story of the rise of the New Day. Loaded with games, trivia, coloring pages, and so much more. The Book of Booty. Shake it, love it, never be it. Available now, online, or wherever books are sold. Portland, on Saturday, October 20th. Burn it down! Experience WWE Live with an epic main event as Dean Ambrose returns to team up with Seth Rollins as they take on Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre in a tag team match. Plus, the B team and the Revival collide for the Raw Tag Team Championship. And don't miss Finn Balor and many more. It's WWE Live in Portland, Saturday, October 20th. Tickets and VIP packages are available. Wrestling fans, welcome back. We talked a little about Jim Nidart, a man that I knew very well, Mr. Ed Cohen. Tony, not too long ago we lost a gentleman that may not be well known to the fans of this era, but certainly in your day, Masa Saito. Saito? Yes. I'm going to guess you didn't know. I didn't know that. Didn't know. Well, unfortunately, Tony Masa Saito has passed. Wow. He's what someone was... you feuded with back in the day. Yep, yep. See, Saito, well, what we used to call a shooter. Yes. And what they used to do to get him popular, they would have people to uh, come from the, uh, the, 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 uh, the audience. And if you got to get in the ring with Saito and try to pin him, I think they have some money that was involved. That was Saito's uh, main thing. So when Saito wrestled a lot of times, he would flip from what we were supposed to do to what he did in the shoot match. So he had an idea of sometimes he would shoot with wrestlers in the ring just to mess with them. So one day me and him got in a shooting match. 
You and Saido. Me and Saido we got in a shooting match. Really? And then we got in a fight back in the dressing room. Really? And then the next night we got in another fight. We must have fought at least four times. Really? Yeah, yeah, four times. And then our family, uh, Vince Sr., came to us and said, if y'all fight tonight, I'm going to fire both of y'all. And that's the reason why we stopped fighting. See, I was raised, if, if, if I fight you today and I don't whoop you, you see me again tomorrow. My mom told us to do that. She said, because people think you're crazy, they leave you alone. You know? And so that's what I did in Saido. And, and, but then me and him, we became the best of friends. Really? Yep, yep. After the fight, me and him, we respected each other. We worked together. Me and him, uh, 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 S.D. Jones and myself against Fuji and Saido. And the funny thing about it, one of the things that I regret, I have a lot of regrets in my life. People say, well, I have no regrets. Well, I do. I regret going to California that night because that same night, they was going to put the belt on me and S.D. Jones. The first time you were going to right, go. Right, but, but the main thing was not to put the belt on me and S.D. Me and S.D. was supposed to be like the transfer champions. Because they wanted to put the belt, the, the Moon Dogs was getting over real good in Japan. Mm -hmm. So they were going to bring the Moon Dog back and make them the, the, the tag champion. But they needed someone to take the belt off of Saito and Fuji in order to give it to, and that's why they teamed up with S.D. Because S.D., their idea was to work a program with me in Backland. I was on my way to working for the, the, the world title, and uh, they, they needed me and SD to take the belt. And the night that they were going to do it in Philly, in the Spectrum, I didn't show up. Because you wanted to get walked on. Yep. You, you old dog, you. Oh, woof, woof, That woof. is a regret for sure. Ow! All right, G Tony, I, I met, gentlemen, you didn't really work all that much with, but I know you encountered him on the independent scene. Uh, some of you made a very interesting observation about when we talked on the phone. Uh, Grandmaster Sexay, Brian Lawler, the son of Jerry the King Lawler. Yeah. I uh, had a very unique circumstances involving his death. You did? You know, you had some interesting observations. Yeah, I took an, uh, I worked with him mostly all last summer mm -hmm. uh, in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. he, he was booked quite re uh, uh, frequently up in West Virginia. And, and he was booked a lot with big time wrestling. And uh, I hear a lot of people say things about the way he act. He was always being criticized by the, uh, the wrestlers. But uh, my observation, I could be wrong. I'm not, a, I'm not as intelligent as a dark head where I can see that. I saw a kid that wanted something from his dad that he could never get. What it is, I don't know. But he, it was something about being married to the king lauder. And Tough shoes to I think he to. expected he expected his father to help him more because Jerry helped a lot of people. I don't I can't recall at all Jerry ever helping this kid. Maybe he had. I, I could be well, wrong. Well, go back to when he broke into the business. He wouldn't even let him use the Lawler name because he didn't want to be perceived as old enough to have a son that could wrestle. Yeah. Well, Jerry wants to be forever young. Yeah. I, I both in the, the ring and with the some kid, of the women. The kid felt unloved and unwanted by his dad. That's what I felt. You know, he, when you mentioned his dad, I, I used to look at his face, and that's when he would really get angry. You know? Angry. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 he wouldn't show it, but it was kind of like the change. He's laughing one minute, and then you miss his dad. He would get up, and he'd walk out the room, and he started smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Well, he certainly was another trouble. And then, and then he would start drinking, and then he would go try to pick a fight. That was the thing. You talk about his dad. He, he'd be laughing a joke and having a good time with the wrestler. As soon as somebody started talking about his dad, he started smoking a cigarette. He'd go right outside, start smoking a cigarette, prance it back and forth, smoking that cigarette, back and forth. Then we'd go out to eat that night in, in a bar or something, and he'd try to pick a fight every night. But if you don't mention his father, he was okay. Well, I tell you, I hate to say it, but that's not one that I was surprised to find out about. The circumstances were certainly interesting. Why his dad didn't get him out of jail? I don't know. For the fans that aren't aware of it, there was somewhat of a... Uh, a mystery out there as to what happened to Brian Lawler as he hung himself in jail. Should have uh, bailed him out. 
Then we'll Maybe you should have, but it, it, the, everything doesn't add up, I guess is the best way to put it. And there's an investigation going on in Memphis right now as to what maybe really happened, Dr. Reese. That's my understanding. Yeah. I mean, just what I've seen in the papers. Very, very interesting. Again, a troubled soul. I could get into a story about him here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation, similar to Jim Neidhart, but you know what I'm saying? He was I'll a very this. troubled kid. I, I, I'll admit that, but I figured that if he had had a closer relationship with his dad, I think this kid would be living today. Well, I'll, re I'll say this. The first time we used him, he was absolutely fantastic with the fans. He was very engaged. He had a good match. He brought the kids into the ring afterwards to do the two cool dance. It was fantastic. The other issues we had with him is a different story for a different time. But it's just, Dr. Reese, you know, it's tough yeah. on the fans sometimes when they lose these wrestling heroes oh, yeah. that they've been familiar with for so long. Yeah, because they're, they're bigger than life and, and immortal. And uh, the image is supposed to be immortal. And it's supposed right. to be bigger than life. And uh, we all play into it, and then it's shocking when we find out that these are real people. It is tough. Well, you know what? It is important to me that we remember those that pass on. I don't know why it's such a sticking point to me, but it really is. It is. It, well, it's part of our lives. And, and you know, we, we look up to a lot of these people, and sometimes for the right reasons, sometimes for the wrong reasons, right. but that's irrelevant. The, the fact is that they're important to us, and they become part of who we are. All right. Well, wrestling fans, you want to talk about maybe something a little bit more positive? We have our Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month drive that's going to be going on through the month of December. Uh, s s December. I'm really pushing the year along. September. Uh, great giant raffle of prizes. Thousands of dollars worth of prizes headlined by a drawing of the winner's choice by Tony Atlas and a phone call from the man. We have donations galore. WWE is involved. Uh, continue to follow BostonWrestling.com for uh, a complete list of the prizes. And again, we're going to help out these poor kids. It's a, we have a great video that will be available online for you to check out. Uh, and, of course, the Patreon channel is launching. 17 years worth of great video, El Presidente. The fans are going to be able yep. to get it, and they're going to be able to support great productions like this because we need it. Otherwise, we're going to have two candles, and we're going to do it in the alley out back with the camcorder. We need the help, President. No, we need the help. And, you know, some of what we do, what we do has more legs than we think. Uh, just so you recall, last year we did a... Uh, we, we did a little film for the first responders at the hurricane. In Houston, yes. It was just retweeted this week by New York EMS. Really? Yep. Wow. Yep. I don't know if you saw that. But, hey, uh, let me tell you, Dr. Race, I never expected that my voice would be on the Howard Stern Show for months every yeah. day with the Iron Cheeks insanity. You never know where these videos are going to go. And again, where we lose so many of these legends, as much as I had had some issues with Jim Neidhart, I would have loved, even now, I would have loved to have had Jim Neidhart here to document his, his memories, you know? Um, WWE does a great job with their productions, but they're very selective in who they do the three-disc DVD of and a documentary of. There's no Tony Atlas three-disc DVD. There's no Jim Neidhart one. There's no uh, Taxaw Jim Duggan. There's no Ted DiBiase and guys like that. We stay 11. What's that? We stay 11. You st all right, well. That's one great... thing I know is about the Hall of Fame. Here we go. <laughs> no, you watch right, every Hall of Fame. Got. If you're very lucky, if they got three people there inducted, that is still living. No, they they won't do more than one dead person a year. Oh, it's just like every other person is dead, they they, they do. But they wait till you die before they put you in there, almost. Well, I th yeah, you know what? You're going to get me going in the wrong way. I'm well, trying to I don't to see what myself. the hole up is. Look, guys are dropping like flies. What's the hole up? Don't you think Vader should have gone in while he was still alive and Mick Foley was really pushing for it? Yes. Don't you think Neidhart should have been in? Yes. That's Neidhart what I mean. was not a Hall of Famer? No. See no. what I'm saying? What they, what were they it's waiting just, it's on? It's a waste. You know what I mean? It's what are a you waste. No. You think they're going to live forever? Well, I think their criteria should be similar. I know it's sports and entertainment a mix, but, you know, after a guy has been retired for X amount of years, get him in while he's still living. Yeah. What? what I hear a lot of wrestlers say that don't introduce, don't put me in after I'm dead. What good is it doing him or his family? Right. They well, get they that get one grand. check, they make a little <laughs> dog, and then and then six months later, it's like he never it never right. existed. You got what you wanted out of it. You know, you you know, put people. There's a lot of people like like uh, I felt bad for Ox Baker. I always mm. felt that Ox Baker should have been there. A lot of people that that put a lot into this business that never 
you know, that is still walking the street, you know, and, and you know, do things for people while they live it. Like my mom used to tell us, uh, and I tell my wife this every night. Every night I tell my wife this. I love you, honey. Oh, aren't you Every nice night. You're a real sweetheart. I'm, well, I'm not going to wait until she passes and then crawl over her grave and tell her how much I love her after she's gone. She's not going to hear me then. All right. Well, fans, again. She's in a different atmosphere. It, she can't hear human voices no more. We hope. <laughs> Only my soul can speak to her, not, right. not my flesh. All right. She's you are, out of the flesh. You're anymore. a romantic, Tony. No, it just... We're not going to be here forever. All right. Well, again, fans, we hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. We hope you weren't one of those. Right, Doc? Yeah. Y'all got middle yeah. checkout day. Yeah. The elementary, middle, high school kids that were trapped in ovens of a school in these 95-degree yeah. days we've had recently. Uh, again, Hell in a Cell weekend, Tony. We got a big episode. Dr. Reese won't be with us, but we relive Legends House. That's going to be a fun episode. Now, Doc. Yeah. Legend House. From what I hear, yeah. was very, very popular. Yes. Why do you think, Doc, they never did another one? I don't know. I don't know. That, that's a good question. I, I mean, some of it is trying to push the younger people. Um, but, but if something but was successful. Success, yeah, yeah. I mean, when he first started the network, that's what kicked it off. That was one yeah. of the first shows, was Legends. Well, it was yeah. the most popular from what I hear. It, it, it got more hits than anything they did. The Divas outdid that, outdid everything. Why would they not do mm. another one? Mm. I don't know. Very That's interesting, Tony. I, if the, I'll tell you this. This is what gets me sometimes. When the fans go on Twitter and they complain and say this or that, I don't know why they don't direct it towards at WWE or at WWE Network. So they're getting the message themselves. When people just blindly tweet it, who's going to read it? If anyone that's a, if a decision maker, you know what I mean? Just one person's point of the view. The only way that I could see with a person that don't want to do something, no matter how good it comes out, it didn't come out the way they wanted it to. That could be it, too. That's often, yeah. It may have came out to the satisfaction of the fans. But not but WWE. Not to their I get you. I, I think it you. went in a direction that they were not expecting it to go. I think it was put together for closure. All right. mm -hmm. Which means show these old guys washed up and used to because they put us in situations where in things we never did before. Right. Well, we don't want to get too much into it now, Tony. We have a whole episode coming, Hell in a Cell weekend, as we continue okay. our pediatric about legend cancer out month. We already have legend cells. Well, for some odd reason, a lot of the stuff they put us into, we yeah. could do. <laughs> like Hexar was a hell of a fisherman, yeah. and he was a hell of a bowler. They put us against old women wanting them to beat us. <laughs> and they beat us, but not that bad because they had we had a few guys that could bowl. All right, Tony. I hear the music. We're wrapping it up. Pleasure to have you here for the president, Dr. David Reese, and a man that never tiptoes around the issues. The Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you Hell in a Cell weekend. Be well. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Let us tell you. Uh, the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation can help raise cash for your nonprofit cause. Experience the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation live in your city, throughout New England, the tri state area, down through the Carolinas, out to our friends in the Midwest and beyond. If your nonprofit organization is looking for an interactive turnkey experience while putting them up fun into fundraising, you've met the perfect tag team partner to work with every step of the way. The MWF offers a variety of packages for groups of almost any size, from our live events at the Boston Garden, the Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex, and the legendary Suffolk Downs, to high school gyms and function halls. We've presented live events everywhere and anywhere. Since 2001, the MWF mission has been simple. Keep the kids off the streets. Under the leadership of President David Reese, we bring the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow to your town. Not for a wrestling show, but an event that features action-packed in-ring wrestling, autograph, pose photo opportunities, Q&A sessions, and so much more. It's the best of sports and entertainment. The week of your event, we can add on to the endeavor with anti-bullying campaigns, library meet and greet reads, youth sport concussion seminars, and more. 
A live events are fit for fans of any age from 5 to 95. This fall is part of our new Kids Club program. We offer live event experiences exclusively for the youngest of fans. On the flip side, we can produce a tailor-made event for fans of an older demographic as well. We work with you every step of the way to get the word out to fans near and far on our local television offerings and to over 50,000 fans and growing on our social media platforms. Your success is our success. If your group has had enough of candy bar and wrapping paper sales and has the energy to team with our passionate fan base, bringing the NWF experience to your community is the answer to put smiles on faces while raising cash for your cause. Contact us today to get the ball rolling for your custom-made event that you'll want to bring back year after year to your community. Don't just take it from us. Here are the folks we've teamed up with in the past.